Also, the cats are going to be screaming because they think it's dinner time. Don't you? But dinner time is until 4.30. And it's, can you read that for me, Parsnip? 3.07. Yes. Yes. You're too early. This is the face of someone who can't tell time. Hey friends, it's Sarah. And today I'm going to go through every single book that I own, but have not read yet. So I've seen some other people do this video where they just kind of like take all the books that they own, talk about them. That's what we're doing here. My TBR shelf is the one below this shelf. You can't see it because there's no camera angle where you can see my face and also that shelf unless I'm lying on the ground. And I think this is going to be a 20 minute video and I do not want to lay on the ground for like an hour. I'm sorry, I am entering middle age at this point basically, so it's not happening. But I have way too many books on my like owned physical TBR shelf and it's preventing me from getting new books, which as we all know is a separate hobby from reading, but one that I actively pursue, especially with my staff discount. And it makes me sad seeing all these books that I haven't read yet. So we're going to go through all the books down here and see what's up. What have I got? What could I maybe get rid of? I think that's going to be a separate video. So stay tuned for an unhaul and maybe a little free library video uncertain so far. But let's let's figure out how many books I have on the shelf and what they all are. Starting off with the book that I most recently acquired and that is Home by Julie Andrews. This is part one of her memoirs. She has home and then she has homework and I keep seeing homework everywhere like at the library and in thrift shops and I was like but I gotta read the first one first so I know about her early years. Uh, and then this was at Valley Village for six bucks so I picked it up. I mean who doesn't love Julie Andrews? She's an icon but like I don't know much about her so I figured let's we'll learn about her. Okay up next another recent acquisition. This is Stiff The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers by Mary Roach. Another nonfiction. It's exactly what it says on the book. It's about corpses. This one I can't get out of the library. I want to read this for a while because I think it's very interesting. I read um, oh, what's her name? Caitlin Doughty, I believe. She's like an undertaker. She does videos on YouTube and she has like a couple books about being a mortician and I thought those were really interesting. I kind of want to learn more about corpses, which is weird because I'm very squeamish. Okay, then we have 17 Last Man Standing by John Brownlow. This was something I got at a publishing event thing where they had a whole bunch of arcs. It's kind of like a James Bondy sort of thing where... There's like an assassin who's retired and then like the assassin who takes over for him is like coming to hunt him down. So he's going to kill number 16, uh, he's number 17, and then one day number 18 will hunt him down. They just get them to, they like are assassins and then they just kill the one who came before them. Okay, uh, it just sounds kind of interesting. I feel like kind of James Bondy. so if I'm ever in the mood for like kind of an action book, if I'm feeling like I want to rewatch John Wick, but I want it in book form. This, this is going to be that book. From the same event, I have The Perfumist of Paris by Alka Joshi. This is also an arc. She actually was at the event. She signed the book for me and it says, Auntie Sarah, who loves to introduce readers to whole new worlds of fragrances, talking birds, and sons who come back to roost. This is the third book in the like henna artist series. I still haven't read the second one. Sorry, Alka. Um, but I'm getting, I'll get there. I'll get there eventually. There. Uh, historical fiction set in like the 60s in India and the first one was excellent and this one is in the 70s and follows like the sister of the main character. I feel a little bit like Mike's Mike with this. Okay, uh, a book that I got from a little library, The Romanoff Empress by C.W. Gortner. Uh, I'm very obsessed with the Titanic. I have a minor obsession with like the Romanoffs and Anastasia because who doesn't after watching the 20th Century Fox classic Anastasia? Who is not then obsessed with Anastasia? Um, but this follows, this follows actually like Anastasia's mom, the Tsarista, and kind of like her life from a teenager till her death, I think. I don't know, seemed interesting. Uh, this was when we were actually on our way to Folk Fest and I found a little free library and had to stop and look through the books. My friends were like, we're trying to get in line to get into the festival. And I was like, yes, this is more important. Another arc that was sent to me by a publisher, Love from Mecca to Medina by SK Ali. This is a sequel to Love from A to Z. This one won my judging books by their first line competition. I'll link that video up top in, in the description. And then I started reading it, as you can kind of see by the, I don't know if you can see, but I've got a little bookmark in there. And I got to page 
32 and was like, I'm not super interested. So I put it down. Maybe I'll pick it up again. It had a great opening line. And then from then on, I was like, I don't know what's happening in this. This is a YA contemporary. And it, yeah, follows these two um, Muslim characters who are in love, but are like separated and are trying to find their way back to each other um, with like post-secondary and stuff. Uh, then another book that was sent to me because I took, p- took part in a um, like up and coming books presentation. So that is A Scatter of Light by Melinda Lowe. I really loved Last Night at the Telegraph Club by this author. And look at this cover. Isn't it stunning? This is a whole finished copy, hardcover, got it for free. Just like so lucky. Yeah, thank you so much to Penguin Random House for sending this to me. It's gorgeous. So this is a like queer coming of age story set around the time when the Supreme Court in the U.S. were talking about legalizing gay marriage um and i think it does feature the characters from last night at the telegraph club like when they're older because it's set like 60 years after that so really excited to read this we love a sapphic book and we love that cover it's gorgeous this is a book of sleep because i'm really bad at getting enough sleep this was like a secret santa gift at one point from a friend and I should probably read it so I can sleep better and so that in my bullet journal videos I can stop saying I didn't get enough sleep. So maybe maybe that should be one of my goals to read that this year. Ooh, up next we have A Million to One by Adipa Jagudar. This is a like heist book set on the Titanic. It's a YA book. Um, I pre-ordered this and got it in December and I just haven't gotten around to reading it because I had like 30 books out from the library. And it's just been crazy. You know, the holidays, that whole time of year, it's nuts. But I really want to get to this one. I need to bring it closer to the front so I can see it better. Um, another book, another arc sent to me from the publisher, Two for the Road by Chantelle Girton. I think this is an adult like contemporary slash romance. It's on sale March 28th. Oh, she works at a romance bookstore. Oh, so cute. Oh my God. Oh, this sounds pretty fun actually. Okay, so she's like a romance bookstore owner and she's like in love with a an audiobook narrator. Like, she's just like, oh my god, he's amazing. Kind of like celebrity worship. And so she goes on this, like, tour through England and he's supposed to, like, lead it. But then he, like, doesn't show up when they're all there. And so it's, like, her and, like, this group of, like, quirky, eccentric other people on the tour going through, like, the English countryside. And, like, maybe he makes an appearance. I don't know. But it sounds super fun and super cute. So I didn't actually look to see what that one was about when I first got it. But that sounds super lovely. So I'm going to have to pick that up soon. Okay, uh, another recent acquisition at the same time that I got the corpse book, The Storied Life of A.J. Fickrey by Gabrielle Zevin, because I recently read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and loved it. That was my first read of 2023 and I haven't beat it so far. It was so good. I, yeah, the hype is excellent on that. So I thought I would pick up another one of her books. I did read when I was younger, uh, Memoirs of a Teenage Amnesiac and enjoyed that. I think I was a little young to read it, but this one looks fun. Also like book related, so... Yeah, I don't know. It's turned into a TV show or a movie or something. So I just thought I would try it because I've only heard like rave reviews about it. Okay, so um, I also have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. Um, I picked this up when I went book shopping with my boyfriend because he got me a gift card to the bookstore where I work for Christmas. And so this was one of the books that I picked up when they were having a hardcover sale. And it's supposed to be like a cozy mystery. It says a curmudgeonly professor journeys to a small town in the far north to stare fairy folklore and discovers dark magic, friendship, and love in this heartwarming and enchanting fantasy. I've heard people say it's good for people who enjoyed like TJ Clune's work, like The House in the Cerulean Sea and The Whispering Door, which I did. So... I'm really excited for like a cozy fantasy and the cover is stunning. We have to readjust. My legs hurt. I'm too too old for this. Okay. um, Then we have A Burning by Mega Majumdar. This one I got on a trip to Victoria at Munro's Books. It was like a blind date with the book. Yeah. So this follows like a group of different characters in India following like a catastrophe. I still I still can't really figure out what this is about to be honest. Every time I read the synopsis I'm like I don't know what the plot is but it sounds interesting anyways and the cover is great. That's what I say about all books because they literally have people to do this. Uh, oh the little boy. It's a little baby. It's just a baby. Um, this is my favorite quote book that I found in a little free library. I love quotebooks.com. It says on the back if you want to check out whatever's on there. I should just read this like as soon as I finish this video because it's very tiny. And it's just quotes. 
those are all the books that are like stacked on top of the books, like stacked like up here. And now we're gonna go on the ones that are like sitting like this. Okay, up first we have it, Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. This is the second book in the series of The Children of Blood and Bone, YA fantasy. I really like the first one, but I read it like four or five years ago. So I don't remember that. So I've been putting off reading this one because I need to find a summary of the first one. And I got this one because they sent a U.S. paperback to our store and we're in Canada and we couldn't sell it. So they're like, does anyone want this? And I was like, sure, I'll take it. I read the first one. Why not have the second one? And it's got an excellent cover, but also one that like, maybe I'll get, maybe I'll give up because like I haven't read it and I read the other one so long ago. I don't even remember if I really wanted to continue the series. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Empire of Wild by Sherry Dimeline. This is an adult book, um, but this is by the author of The Marrow Thieves. And this one is based on like a Métis um, traditional story of the Hogahu, which is kind of like a werewolf creature. And it's like a woman who has lost her husband. And then one day like a preacher comes to town and she's like, oh my God, this is my husband. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a priest. So spooky supernatural stuff going on. Um, then I have American Dirt by Janine Cummins. This was given to me by my boyfriend's mom and it features Mexican characters. And this is set in Mexico and there's a bookstore and the main character kind of gets on the wrong side of the local like cartel, the head of the cartel. It was Oprah's book club, but I've heard some things in this cause it's not written by like a Mexican author. It's written by a white author. So I've heard that like, it's a little like stereotyped. I don't know if quite racist is right, but like kind of got stereotypical portrayals of Mexican people. So I am not sure about this one. If you've read this, like, let me know, is it good? Is it worth it? Or is it like stereotypes? Because we don't want to encourage that. We want to read diversely and not read books that just perpetuate stereotypes about different people. So uh, The Flame Alphabet by Ben Marcus. I picked this up at a local indie bookstore because I love the cover. And the premise of the book is that like the sound of children's speech is lethal. And so it's like this family who are trying to like save themselves, but they also want to save their child. But like if the child talks, it will kill them and hurt them. So they have to like run away from their daughter, which is upsetting as heck. And then it sounds like the dad's like trying to cure whatever's happening. Um, I did start reading it and put it down for a little bit because it was just written very, um, very much. It was very written so hard. Yes. Why well, use many word when few word work? Because it was like very beautifully written, but like a little more intellectual, if you will, than I wanted at the time. I wanted something light and fluffy and this was giving me more than one brain cell. The Rescue by Nicholas Sparks. Oh my God. When they used to have library sales and books were 50 cents. Oh, I miss those days. Um, Nicholas Sparks, my friend gave this to me because she loves Nicholas Sparks and I just still haven't read it. But it's got Fireman in it, so that's great. I don't know why I haven't read it yet. It sounds fun. Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. There's a TV show about it. It's got Reese Witherspoon in it and what's her face from The Fault in Our Stars, Shailene Woodley and Nicole Kidman. It, it kind of sounds like it's suburban moms behaving badly in like a mystery thriller way and not in a like raunchy comedy way. Maybe I'll get to it. I don't know. Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. This I keep seeing on uh, Stories for Coffee's YouTube and Instagram and everything. She loves Chanel Clayton. And this is a historical fiction set in Cuba, um, split between the 50s and 2017. So I think it'd be really cool to read a book set in Cuba. Okay, uh, I said I was obsessed with Anastasia. This one is I Was Anastasia by Ariel Lawhon. It's a novel about Anna Anderson who claimed that she was Anastasia. Turns out it was not, but maybe in this one she is. I don't know. Found in a little free library, All the Feels by Olivia Dade. This is like a reality TV star and his like handler and then they fall in love and it's got plus size main character. So that's excellent. Love to see that in a romance. Yag Yazi, Homegoing, Love Transcendent Kingdom. This follows like um, two lines of a family through 300 years in Ghana and it's supposed to be even better than Transcendent Kingdom. So I'm super excited for this one. I'll get there eventually team. You know I will. Stuart McLean, who doesn't love Vinyl Cafe? If you don't know what Vinyl Cafe is, it was a like radio program where Stuart McLean would tell stories about this fictional family where we've got like the super inept father and like the kids who are like, oh dad, and then the wife who is like, oh my god, Dave. But they're just so funny. 
you can find them somewhere. There is a podcast. There's a new podcast, too, where it's one of the producers of The Violent Cafe who is, like, talking about behind-the-scenes stuff and then also playing old episodes because, unfortunately, Stuart McLean did die, so he's not around anymore. But it's excellent. I bought this one. There's, like, a whole bunch of different ones because he had put out so many episodes of The Violent Cafe, so there's, like, lots of different books. But this one specifically has one... Um, with like a rat. There's like a whole thing about a rat. It's really funny, um, but I've been looking for it forever and I finally found it in this one. So I had to buy it. The Whisper on the Night Wind by Adam Schultz. This one was another thrift store find. Man, thrift stores are amazing. Go buy everything from thrift stores. No, don't do that because you also need to support your local indie bookstore. But if you're on a real tight budget, thrift stores. This is a nonfiction book and it's about him going to look for Bigfoot, I believe something like that. He like goes to investigate like weird local folklore things. I don't know. Is it in Ghost Staff Pick of the Month? I trust him. Irsa Sigurder daughter. I'm so sorry I can't see your name. The Silence of the Sea. This is in her uh, Thora Goodman's Daughter series and I have not read any of the other ones but I found this in a little free library when I was just going somewhere else and that was super exciting. I really enjoyed the Freya and Huldar series so I'm excited to see what her other stuff is like. A House in the Sky by Amanda Lindhout and Sarah Corbett. Nonfiction as well. Authors from Calgary where I'm from. Amazing. So Amanda worked as like TV reporter and she traveled all across like Latin America, India, Bangladesh, Sudan, Syria, Pakistan. Um, and then she was abducted and held captive in Somalia for 15 months. And this is her story. Really crazy. <laughs> Strangers by Katharina Vermet. This was given to me at work because it was like the top book of the year in 2020 and they had copies that uh, employees could take so we could like recommend it to people. I obviously did not read it in time but this follows several uh, indigenous children going through like the foster care system and having a rough go of it from what I can tell. I started reading it and got I don't know like 100 pages in maybe and I was like, this is just like real sad. All the sad things are happening. And I wanted something happier because everything's really sad right now. So I put it down for the moment and maybe I'll pick it up later. My mom's reading it right now. So I'm waiting for her to give me an opinion on it to see if I should keep reading it or pass it on. Yellow Wife by Sadeka Johnson. This is a historical fiction book. My mom was clearing out her book bookshelves and she was like, here, take this. And I was like, I don't know if I'll read it. And she's like, uh, you will read it. Take it. So now it's on my bookshelves. Yeah, this follows a girl who um, was enslaved and then she is freed on her 18th birthday, but ends up having to like leave home and it's not what she thought it would be. And it's not great, unfortunately. I've heard, I heard great things about this book and my mom was like, you have to read it. So I guess I have to read it. Billie Jean King, uh, all in an autobiography about the legendary tennis, tennis player, Billie Jean King. I think I've said this before, but like, I don't care about tennis. But it is also about her being like um, one of the first or maybe the first openly queer tennis player. So that sounds really interesting. I'm still really on the fence with this one. I don't know if I'll read it because I don't really know about much about her. I'm not sure how much I care about her. I think it really depends on how much it touches on like social issues because that's more what I'm interested in rather than the tennis. Even though I did read Carrie Soto, I still don't care about tennis. Of Darkness Shining Light by Patina Gappa, this is an arc that I've had for uh, four years now. This is from 2019. This is about like exploration in 19th century Africa when a doctor like dies. And so the people he was traveling with carry his body and like all his possessions the, like across the continent of Africa so that he can be buried in his homeland. Which sounds kind of interesting. I need to like do something that'll force me to read these books. Very Bad People by Kit Frick. This is a YA thriller. I don't know what's about. This was another arc that was sent to me. Um, and this is kind of like uh, elite boarding school, secret society, so kind of dark academia. Maybe I'll try and read this in October. Ashes of Gold by JL. This is the sequel and final book in the Wings of Ebony duology. Another arc that I got at work. And I thought the first one was good, but I don't remember what happened in it. And I don't know if I really care about finishing this series, to be honest. I mean, this cover is incredible. It's amazing. First book didn't really grab me the way I wanted it to, so I don't know if I'll continue slash finish the series. But it's also only one more book in the series. I don't know. That's why it's been sitting on my shelves for so long. Wilderness of Stars by Shay Earnshaw. This was another book sent to me by a publisher. 
Thank you to the publishers for sending me books. They just send sometimes too many and ones I have not heard of. So I'm just like, I don't know if I'll read this. I'm not ungrateful, I promise. Um, This one is Magic and YA and their stars. Yep, that's all I know about it. Miss Meteor by Taylor K. Magia and Anna Marie McElmore. I've read stuff by Anna Marie McElmore before and really enjoyed it. This is like teen beauty pageant, but I think there's like a kind of supernatural element to it as many of their books tend to have. So I really look forward to reading this. This is another one that I purchased for myself. So I do want to get to this one soon. The Feeling of Falling in Love by Mason Deaver. This is a queer YA contemporary novel about falling in love with the wrong person. My friend went to Ireland and he brought me back this beautiful book of 100 Irish short stories and I need to read them because it's really cool. But thank you, Nathaniel. It was a beautiful gift and I'm very excited to read some. Geraldine Brooks, People of the Book. It's like rare book expert finds a like very important historical Jewish book and there's like a mystery in it somehow. Uh, this was on my like, maybe I should get rid of it list from last unhaul. Maybe I should still get rid of it. I haven't read it yet. Mm -hmm. Fake Plastic Love by Kimberly Tate. Kind of like a modern day Great Gatsby sort of thing. 20 somethings acting badly. Okay, what do we got? Beth Revis, uh, A World Without You. I believe this one deals with mental health and schizophrenia. It's about a 17-year-old boy struggling with delusions and it just sounds like it's dealing with like mental health and kind of he falls in love with a girl and has to choose between like his mental health and the girl which sounds like a really terrible place to put yourself in um elijah of buxton by christopher paul curtis this is i believe a middle grade novel um this is another one where my mom was like you need this and i was like i don't know if i'll read it and she's like put it on your shelves i don't care um, but it is 11 year old elijah lives in buxton canada a settlement of runaway slaves near the american border He's the first child in the town to be born free, and he's the best at checking rocks and catching fish. Look at you, Elijah. And then he has to track down a thief who's stolen money from his friend who had been saving up to uh, buy his family out of captivity in the South. Okay, this does sound pretty good, actually. I didn't know what it was about. Uh, Little B, Chris Cleave, another one my mom was like, you gotta read. She gets rid of her books and then just gives them to me. This one doesn't say what it's about. It says there's two women, they meet... They have to, one of them has to make a terrible choice, and then two years later, this is when the book starts. I don't know. The Language of Flowers by Vanessa Diffenbach. Diffenbach? Diffenbach? No idea. So it follows a woman who had gone through the foster care system. Her only connection to the world is through flowers and their meanings. Um, oh no, and then she's unhoused, and she plants a small garden of her own. Soon a local florist discovers her talent and Victoria realizes she has a gift for helping others through the flowers she chooses for them. Actually, it sounds quite good. I think I just picked it up because I'm very intrigued by like the Victorian language of flowers and I saw that this had it in it and I was like, yes. More flower books. Um, the Lost Flowers of Alice Hart by Holly Ringland. This is about, I believe this is an Australian book. Yep. Again, someone suffers a trauma and then uses language of flowers to communicate because they can't communicate with their words. The Ascent of Everest by John Hunt. It's a real raggedy bitch. This is the story of how on 29th May 1953, two men, both endowed with outstanding stamina and skill, inspired by an unflinching resolve, reached the top of Everest and came back unscathed to rejoin their comrades. This is about the first time that Mount Everest was climbed in the 50s. Another Everest book, The Other Side of Everest by Matt Dickinson, climbing the North Face through the killer storm. I don't know if you know, I think I've mentioned it a couple times on here, but I love a good Everest disaster book. That's what this is. What's that? Another mountain book, The Beckoning Silence by Joe Simpson. This one is just about him climbing mountains and having a rough time. Final mountain book, The Mountain <laughs> by Ed Vesters with David Robert. It's about Everest. He's the only American to have climbed all 14 of the world's 8,000 meter peaks and the sixth person to do so without supplemental oxygen. He's going for Everest, baby. Will he do it? I don't know. Maybe. Probably. On to my other obsession, Titanic um, by Colonel Archibald Grace. This is a first-hand account of the sinking of the Titanic. I also forgot there's more books up here. We'll finish the ones down here first and then we'll go up there. Modern Poetry. It's a collection of poems. I just got to make my way through it. I have read some of them. I just got to read all of them. Um, Finding Forrester. I said in my unhaul video that this should be really quick to read, but I didn't do it yet. I should do that. Is missing a page. Maybe I won't read it. So I watched this movie in high school and this copy is actually from my high school. I found it in a little free library, but as you can see, it's incredibly waterlogged 
And it is, in fact, missing at least one page. I think someone needs to put this book out as misery. Maybe I'll just use it for bullet journaling. The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens is just the most beautiful little edition. Also, they read it in Little Women. I will probably never read this because every time I start a Charles Dickens book, I get very sad because his books are really boring. So I probably will never read it, but it's just like a cute little edition that I just want to own because it's nice. And I'm allowed to have nice things because they are nice and not because I want to consume them. Dracula by Bram Stoker. It's the vampire boy. I've heard it's racist because it's old and because he's racist. I was going to take part in Dracula Daily and I got the emails and then I did not read them. I'm just really bad at reading classics, but you know what? Maybe for next Halloween. I don't know. I can just say these things. I'm not promising anything. I'm just saying. Okay, this one is called Policeman's Lot. It's just a collection of like detectives or police stories. So I think this is basically like a bunch of true crime stories. I got this at a bookstore that was like exclusively a like true crime and mystery bookstore in Edmonton, uh, which is pretty neat. So it's just kind of cool and old. I don't know if I'll ever read it or like read the whole thing, but I just thought it was really interesting and cool. Another one that I collect just for the sake of collecting. Another gift from Nathaniel. He loves to buy beautiful big books. And I love that for him and for me because then I got this gorgeous edition of classic works from women writers. And it's just a bunch of works from women writers. For example, it's got stuff by like Agatha Christie. It's got the old wallpaper. Freaked me out. The Brontes are in here. Emily Dickinson, Virginia Woolf, George Eliot. Just like short stories from famous female classic authors. It's just a, a big boy and a little intimidating, but I will read them eventually. Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee by D. Brown. So this is about the Wounded Knee conflict between the indigenous people in what is now the United States of America and the colonizers, but told from the indigenous perspective and not the colonizers perspective the way that a lot of history is. So kind of like the first indigenous literature that made its way into like mainstream white culture, I would say, maybe. I could be wrong. Can you tell we're in the classic section? Um, then I have Maurice by Ian e. Forster. It's gay. I love the movie. I want to read the book. Hello, sweet girl. Yes, this is a classic. It's kind of like a coming of age story and like coming into your, your sexuality because it does follow a gay character as he kind of comes to term with his sexuality. I believe it's also in like mostly in boarding school or maybe I'm thinking of a different one. Viet by Charlotte Bronte. This is, I believe, another boarding school book. I do like a boarding school book. I blame the book series that shall not be named. It follows a teacher at a girl's boarding school and the things that they get into. The Blue Castle by Ellen Montgomery. This is by the author of Anne of Green Gables and she lives in a stifling house and then she's diagnosed with a terminal illness and is like, I gotta live my life because there's not much of it left. And decides to pursue life as it is in the novels that she so loves. Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Uh, don't know what it's about, but it's Jane Austen. Two sisters, Eleanor and Marianne Dashwood, who represent Sense and Sensibility respectively. When both appear to be deserted by the young men they had intended to marry, the stage is set for a delicious comedy of manners that not only showcases Austen's perception, humor, and incomparable prose, but offers a splendid glimpse of upper and middle class English society of the early 19th century. It's Jane Austen. Also by Jane Austen, Persuasion. Anne Elliot lost the love of her life eight years earlier and the sorrow lingers on, yet the dashing Captain Wentworth did not desert her. It was Anne who rejected him because she was persuaded that she could make a better match. She never did. Ba, ba, ba. The original Second Chance Romance. Then we have Middlemarch by George Eliot. It's a heckin' chonky book, but look at that cover. So I think this is just kind of like slice of life sort of stuff set in the 19th century. So just kind of like how life is changing and in this like fictional town and also the characters who live in it. Daphne du Maurier's Frenchman's Creek. I really liked Rebecca. My cousin Rachel was like medium for me, but I wanted to give one of her like romances a try. And this is a like a pirate romance. So I'm kind of excited for that actually. Okay, that is everything from this shelf. And now we go up here. Oh, what have we got? More books for my mom, but that need to go back to her. I have the journals of Louisa May Alcott, uh, compiled and edited by Joel Meyerson and Daniel Shealy and associate editor Madeline B. Stern. It's the journals of the author of Little Women, which I love. Then I also have the selected letters of Louisa May Alcott done up by the same people. What else have I got? These are ones to go back to my mother. Have The Season of Love by Helena Greer. This is a holiday adult romance that centers like Jewish characters who run a like Christmas tree farm and there's like grief and stuff. I started reading it and then I DNF'd it and I still have it because I'm not sure if I should try and pick it up again. Bookshop of the Brokenhearted by Robert Hillman. 
Another one that I DNF'd, but like maybe we'll try and go again. It's like a guy whose wife divorced him and he hasn't been able to see his kid who he loves. And then he um, meets a woman who survived Auschwitz and there's like a bookstore, sort of. The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane by Lisa C. This one I plan to read this year. It was part of my 12 friends recommend me 12 books for 12 months. This was my mom's recommendation. Historical fiction set in China. The Dix Enfants que Madame Ming n'a jamais eu by Eric Emmanuel Schmidt. It's about a guy and he goes to China and meets Madame Ming and she's like, let me tell you about my 10 children. And he's like, but isn't there only a one child law? And so maybe the children aren't actually real. Frankly in Love by David Yoon. It's a teen romance and the main character falls in love with a white girl and is like, my parents, my Korean parents are not going to be happy about this. Toni Morrison's Sula. Um, this is about two black heroines from the close-knit childhood in a small Ohio town through their sharply divergent paths of womanhood to their ultimate confrontation and reconciliation. So basically one of them stays in hometown and then the other one kind of goes to the big city and then they like reconnect and it's like, whoa. Mirror in the Sky by Adita Karana. This one I've also had for quite a while. So this is a YA novel, uh, kind of like sci-fi. Um, there is a mirror planet that's like Earth. They call it Terra Nova. Yeah, I don't know. And how that like changes their life. On board RMS Titanic. This was a birthday gift and it is like a collection of like letters and stuff from the Titanic. Like I've heard really good things and I've been looking for it for quite a while. Then we have Titanic Survivor by Violet Jessup. She worked on the Titanic and survived the sinking and then she worked on the Britannic and also survived that sinking. They did a puppet history episode on her and I want to read this even more. This is even higher up on my list now because like, girl, why would you get on a boat again? <laughs> Eden's Outcasts by John Matheson. This is about Louisa May Alcott and her father. This one, the Pulitzer Prize. I didn't know that. That's cool. As you can tell, I was like, I want to learn more about the author of Little Women. So I bought books about it. Uh, Amy Tan, The Hundred Secret Senses. I don't even know what this one's about, but I know that her other book is really famous, The Joy Luck Club. It doesn't have a synopsis, it just has a giant picture of her on the back, which I appreciate, but doesn't tell me anything about the book. Mm -hmm. No idea. This is Totally Joe by James Howe. This was a gift from my friend Emma last Christmas, and it's a middle grade book about queer characters, so I'm excited for that too. Uh, another arc that was sent to me unsolicited was The Rumor Game by Danielle Clayton and Sona Cheripotra. Sorry if I said that wrong. Uh, this is another kind of like mystery-ish book. It's got like fun like texts and stuff in it. Posh private school for the DC's elite. And it's like the rumor mill is like going crazy and people are getting upset about it. Crying in H Mart by Michelle Donner. This is the biography that had everyone crying last year. So I, of course I had to buy it because I love a memoir that will make me cry. And this is about kind of like her relationship with her mom and then her mom died and her grief and all that. Uh, and then I have Namoyet by Chief Robert Joseph. This was also another free book from work because of uh, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. We got a book by an indigenous author and this is obviously nonfiction. He survived residential school and he was like on the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. So he just sounds like he has a lot of very interesting and important things to say. And underneath the dust jacket, it's beautiful. It's amazing. I also have The Perfect Find by Tia Williams. Um, she's the author of Seven Days in June, which I loved. And this is another romance from her. Follows a fashion editor who is has had a life breakdown and then has is kind of like starts a new job and is like way out of her depths and starts to fall for someone that she shouldn't. Um, but I do plan on reading this like right now. So hopefully by the time this video comes out, this will be off my TBR. Uh, but those are the 82 books currently on my physical TBR. I do feel like I should get rid of some of them because I don't know if I'll ever read them or if I'm as excited to read them as some other books. So those are the books that I have to read at some point that I own. Will they ever get read? Dear God, I hope so. Uh, but thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you next time. Now go read a book. Gotta be snappy, gotta make it entertaining. Gets the people going. I don't know what that's from. I think it's Will Ferrell. I have not consumed whatever that's from, but I, it's, it's catchy. Just millennial things. Am I millennial? I don't know. I have a constant crisis. By Julie Andrews. That's the wrong side.